Hello, and thanks for joining us from our studios in Tel Aviv. Coming up in today's newscast, the wave of terror continues in Israel. Yesterday's attacks have given Tel Aviv a new guitar hero, and you won't believe what Iran is riding on its new missiles. I'm Denise Wood, here with the latest news in Israel. The wave of terror hit a high point over the last 24 hours as seven different terror attacks took place in Israel. Today, two separate shooting attacks took place in Jerusalem. Early this morning, two Palestinian terrorists pulled up in a vehicle and opened fire on an Egged bus in Jerusalem's Ramot neighborhood. The attackers later shot at civilians and tried to ram them with their car at a light rail stop near Jerusalem's old city, critically wounding an Israeli civilian. The victim is from Beit Hanina in East Jerusalem and was on his way to the city center. Police returned fire and shot and killed the terrorists. Last night, multiple terror attacks took place in Jaffa, resulting in one death and 11 injuries. The deceased victim is being identified as American tourist Taylor Force, who was visiting from Texas. Force was 29 years old and a U.S. Army veteran, who came to Israel as a part of a school trip for his graduate program at Vanderbilt University. Other victims also include Force's wife, as well as an Arab Israeli, a Palestinian, and a pregnant woman. The attacker was shot dead by Israeli police and has been identified as 22-year-old Palestinian Bashar Masala from the West Bank. Two terror attacks also occurred earlier yesterday, one in Petah Tikva and one in Jerusalem. A Palestinian attacker stabbed and moderately wounded a Haredi man who was on his way to the store in Petah Tikva. The Haredi man then pulled the knife out of his own neck and neutralized the terrorist. In Jerusalem, two Israeli policemen were seriously wounded when a terrorist opened fire on them near Herod's gate. The police returned fire at the attacker and neutralized the terrorist. Now we have with us on the phone Dr. Ayal Khashavia, who is a senior doctor in the trauma unit, unit at Echilov Hospital in Tel Aviv. Good evening, Dr. Khashavia. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I understand some of the victims from yesterday's terror attacks are still under your care. Can you update us on their condition? Uh, yes. Uh, Ichilov got uh, six, cash, six patients, uh, injured patients, that uh, we got from the uh, terror attack. Um, two of them were uh, severely injured uh, by uh, multiple stab wounds. Um, after uh, diagnosing them, we uh, rushed them into the operating room. Um, one of them is a young woman uh, with multiple injuries uh, to her uh, abdomen and limbs, and the other one is uh, with uh, multiple injuries to the back. We operated on them. They, were, uh, they got out of danger. We stabilized them. Uh, two others were a husband and a wife, the pregnant woman, which was stabbed also. Uh, she got uh, a thorough care in the emergency room. Um, all the patients are stable and safe now. Three of them uh, got to the ICU, the intensive care unit. Uh, one of them is still there. Two of them got out of the unit. Uh, one got discharged today. Uh, and we only have one patient in the ICU. The other five patients are stable and okay. Uh, and we are very happy with their condition right now. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Khashavia. And we have with us on the phone Dr. Esher Salman, who is the deputy manager at Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem, where several of the terror victims are currently being treated. Good evening, Dr. Salman. Thanks for joining Good us. Good evening. Can you update us on the current status of the victims that are being treated at Hadassah Hospital? So we have now three victims, actually two policemen from yesterday. Both of them in our intensive care unit. One is uh, severely injured, the other one is moderately too severe. Both of them are stable and, and there's no major risk for the life at this point. Uh, otherwise, we did get um, a Palestinian victim this morning who was shot in his face and he's uh, now being assessed in our intensive care unit. I believe he will need surgery in the, uh, few, the coming few days. But otherwise, he's as well quite uh, stable, and I really hope that the three of them would recover. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Salmon. Israeli leaders are coming together for emergency meetings following a series of shocking terror attacks throughout Israel. IDF troops have already closed off two West Bank villages, which are believed to be the homes of two of yesterday's attackers.
The IDF says it sealed off the Palestinian villages of Zawiya and Hajja. The Israeli police are also calling for Israeli citizens to stop Palestinians who are illegally residing or working in the Jewish state. Late last night, the Israeli Prime Minister held emergency consultations with his defense chiefs, and the Israeli officials have now decided on a series of immediate steps to halt the violence. The Israeli government plans on sealing gaps in the fence that runs through the Jerusalem area and building a new fence in the Takumiya region. The defense chiefs will also try to advance legislation to place penalties on people who aid illegal aliens and migrant laborers and to shut down media outlets that propagate incitement. Meanwhile, the Hamas terror group is praising yesterday's attacks and is congratulating the terrorists, saying they're heroic martyrs. In the wake of the deadly rampage, Hamas says Israel is failing to stop what the group is calling the latest intifada. With so much heavy news about the wave of terror, we wanted to take a minute to spotlight two Israeli heroes who found themselves in the wrong place at the right time and helped fight off the attackers. Two Israelis stepped up to the plate during the last 24 hours and potentially kept terrorists from killing more people. This morning in Jerusalem, an Israeli citizen saw two terrorists firing on a city bus and fired a shot at them. The result? The attackers fled the scene and left the people on the bus alone. Tel Aviv has also found a hero in yesterday's Jaffa terror attacks, when an Israeli smashed the terrorist with a guitar to slow down his rampage. Yishai Montgomery was in Jaffa during the attacks and says he smashed his guitar on the terrorist when he tried to stab him and those in the area. Montgomery says after he hit the terrorist with his guitar, he kept chasing after him until he heard police shots. <laughs> כי <laughs> כי הוא, הוא התחיל לרוץ בריצת אמוק לכביש והוא יכל כאילו כביכול להפתיע עוד אנשים yeah. בדרך. Israeli media has dubbed Montgomery as the guitar hero and Israeli rocker Aviv Geffen has decided to give him one of his personal guitars. The Tel Aviv music store Khalilit has also offered to give him a new guitar. אחרי שישי למעשה פצע את אהובתו בתקרית, חלילית החליטה להעניק לו גברת הרבה יותר מכובדת. In fact, people were so inspired by Montgomery's actions that Israelis also opened a GoFundMe campaign to buy him a new guitar, and it's already raised thousands of dollars. You probably know that Israel is a very small country, roughly the size of New Jersey, but it still has a lot of farmland and ranches, and many farmers say they struggle with theft and vandalism to the point that it's hard to survive. Agriculture is a crucial industry in the Jewish state, and one organization has come up with a plan to protect Israel's farmers. I'm here today with Wam Shmuli, who is a brigadier general in the Israeli Air Force and is also head of the board for Hashomer Hadash. But first, we have a clip to show you to help you understand why Israeli farmers need protection. <laughs> אתה מתחיל לקשור, לסגור את החצי קילומטר האלה. יום יום, עשר שעות ביום, שתים עשר שעות, נקשור את זה. אתה גומר אחרי חודש, שלוש שעות, הלכתי לאכול משהו, עוד פעם הקילומטר שעמלתי עליו חודש שלם, נחתך. בשבוע שעבר ביום חמישי בסביבות שש בערב, אני ישבתי, שמרתי על הבקר וראיתי את השטח נדלק בשתי נקודות שונות, ואחר כך ראיתי טרקטורון בורח מהשטח. השטח הזה שאתה רואה אותו פה, סופג בממוצע 20 הצתות בשנה מינימום. בשעה וחצי לא נשאר לי שטח, לא נשאר לי אוכל לפרות. זאת אומרת שהייתי צריך לקנות ב- ב- בעשרות אלפי שקלים. זה החזיר אותי עשר שנים אחורה. אתה מתיישב על הארץ, אתה אומר, מה אני עכשיו אמור לעשות? מה אני אעשה? כבר הבנתי שלשרוד פה אני לא יכול. הרמתי ידיים. So, um, thank you again for coming in today. So, after hearing these clips of people saying what their problems are, can you tell me a little bit more about what your organization does? First of all, Denise, I would like to send a quickly recovery for all the wounded in the last uh, terrorist attack. 
Of course. Since I have uh, two sons in the military, I know that uh, the Tsal and the IDF is going to do the best they can in order to protect the people of Israel and also the tourists. Very important. Okay. Uh, what we do is very simple. We safeguard the land of Israel uh, through uh, uh, social activities and education. It always go together. You have to know why you are here on one hand and to be in the ground and to help the farmers. And I, as a farmer, I know how much is important not to keep, not to leave those people along by themselves uh, when people come and try to destroy their growth, their cattle and the livestock. Absolutely. Now, I understand you're a former pilot in the Israeli Air Force. You obviously spent a lot of time in the air protecting Israel. And how does it feel now to have your focus be on the ground and protecting Israel from a ground standpoint? I fly a jet airplane in the last 37 years. I flew 6,000 hours. I wow. flew all over the Middle East with no visa or permission. But for me, it's very natural. Since I was born as a farmer, I am still farmer, active farmer. And to protect the air superiority is important for protecting the state of Israel. But if you don't have a place to land, it's useless to have a good uh, F-16 and F-15s. Absolutely. So for me, it was very natural. If I spent 30 years protecting the state of Israel from the air, I have to keep on protecting the next 30 years, protecting it from the ground. And I think that the Shomer HaChadash, which is a kind of a social educational movement, it's actually the new Zionism. And we uh, motivate and mobilize thousands of volunteers, mostly youth and elderly people. All of them come and spend time in the open area, help the farmers, and actually educate themselves. My grandfather was a pioneer back in 1920s, and he came from Europe. And he, doesn't know, he didn't know anything about agriculture. So he took three years to educate himself to become, once again, after 2,000 years, an agriculture and a farmer. So actually, this is what we do. Wow. And actually, I come, I'm coming now from the Negev with the high school, a new high school that we have for Shomer HaChadash. And those, uh, these high schools, they study for uh, two hours in the afternoon, but in the morning, they are working in the farm. And they educate themselves through working. So in a sense, it's connecting to the roots, connecting to the ground, and thinking about the continuity of the Jewish people. And we are taking our shift, and this is what we educate for. Fantastic. Now, I understand a lot of your work involves protecting farmland in the Negev and the Galilee region in particular. Why is help needed specifically in these areas? Mostly those are the places that uh, there are open areas, open space, and uh, most of the big farms located in the Negev and the Galilee. So this is the first priority. If someone uh, called for help, we can't ignore. We have to keep on Arvut Adadit, to come and be with him, to help him, to give him a night off so he can go to his family, and we are there. So we mobilize people from all variety of Israeli society, and this is what's important, uh, to, to make this kind of a movement uh, for all Israelis in order to protect the land and to be part of the story, the big story of the Jewish people and the Israel. And nowadays, I'm happy to uh, announce that we have a program also for youth and the young people, the age of 16 up to 25, from America and the diaspora. So actually it's a new uh, program that uh, we called it Le'ovda u Shomra. In Hebrew, this is what uh, God said to Adam when he gave him a, a paradise. He said, said him Le'ovda u Shomra, work it and protect it. So we uh, invite young uh, people, the age of 16 up to 25, to come and work with us in Ashomer HaChadash, in the farms, uh, educate, uh, work in the land, uh, studying together, and protect the land at night. So this is a new uh, program that the government of Israel supported, and we are now uh, published this program all over the US. Oh, fantastic. Now, for those who want to volunteer, want to get involved in this new program or any of your programs, how can they go about doing that? It's very easy. We have a, fa a very active Facebook and we have a website in English. So actually, deep in the website in English, Ashomer HaChadash, The New Guardian. And there you see all these uh, video clips and programs that we run. 
uh, either you are young, uh, middle age or old, we have a program for you to be part. And if, if uh, all people listen to us uh, during this bro broadcast in America, you remember the old time when we went to a kibbutz in Israel in order to help the Israelis to, do, to cultivate the land? We renew it now. We have a program for you. You can come and help us to be part of Hashomer HaChadash, to be part of this new movement. And I tell you, it's connect directly to what happened this uh, last night, the terror, the terror attacks. We have to be strong. If you think about the national security of Israel, so one pillar I know is the IDF. I spent there 35 years. Another pillar, of course, it's strong economy. It's very easy. It's not very easy. It's very important. But the main pillar is the uh, social uh, unity and actually the Arvuta Dadit among ourselves. So we educate ourselves uh, using the land as the way to educate and deep, in the, uh, deep our studying in Judaism, Zionism, and the Middle Eastern studies in order to be part of the big story of the rebuilt of the State of Israel. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It sounds like you have so much to say. We might have to invite you back again sometime to hear even more about it. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we are waiting for you in a Shomer HaChadar. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you. Iran test fired two ballistic missiles this morning, and it's definitely trying to send a message to Israel. Iran is saying the missiles are made to be capable of reaching Israel, and that's not all. An Iranian news source is now saying the missiles had the phrase, Israel must be wiped out, written on them in Hebrew. The head of Iran's Revolutionary Guard says the test was designed to show Israel that it's capable of wiping out the Jewish state. The missiles struck targets 1,400 kilometers away and the distance to Israel is only about 1,000 kilometers. This isn't the first time Iran has put messages against Israel on its missiles, but it's the first time it's done so since Iran signed the nuclear deal with the U.S. and other major world powers. The U.S. says it's closely watching the developments, but not everyone thinks the tests violate the nuclear agreement. While the White House is debating its next move, the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives says U.S. lawmakers will push for more unilateral sanctions against Iran. This is not a violation of the, of the nuclear agreement. Uh, there are, uh, or there's at least one specific United Nations Security Council resolution um, that could apply here. And the truth is we're still reviewing uh, the uh, Iranian launch uh, to uh, assess whether it is necessary for this matter to be raised uh, before the United Nations Security Council, uh, and we'll do that. And we'll do that work. Uh, but you know, our long-standing concerns with Iran's ballistic missile program uh, uh, have been well chronicled, uh, and even earlier this year, uh, the United States uh, put in place sanctions against uh, Iran because of their ballistic missile activity. Uh, but we'll review this particular incident, uh, review this particular launch, uh, to determine. Uh, w uh, what the appropriate response is. Even though the news has felt a little depressing in Israel over the last two days, there were still a few bright moments. The iconic supermodel Naomi Campbell made a special visit to Israel in honor of International Women's Day. U.S. Vice President Joe Biden wasn't the only celebrity to meet with former Israeli President Shimon Peres this week. Supermodel Naomi Campbell was also at the Paris Peace Center in Jaffa to receive the Women Leading Change Award in recognition of her work to help women around the world. Campbell and Perez also watched a group of Jewish, Arab, and Palestinian girls play soccer together to encourage peace through sports. The pair also spoke together on stage at the Paris Peace Center to stress the importance of women's equality. Campbell has said she looks up to the former president, and it looks like the feelings are mutual. Perez praised the supermodel for her positive influence and says she's an inspiration. Since you are for the first time with your mother, I want to tell you, mother, if I have to describe your daughter in one word of all her qualities and contributions, I would suggest to say she is an inspiration. That sums up your personality. I'm in Israel. I'm happy to be here. And that's the way I live my life. I choose to live my life today, not thinking about tomorrow, um, and staying in the present moment. All of the recent terror has everyone feeling a little down, but it's really touching to see how many Israelis stepped up to the plate to stop the violence. So today's word is gibul, which means hero in Hebrew. 
The root letters of the word Gibor mean courage, which makes a lot of sense since you need courage to be a hero. But interestingly enough, those same letters are used in the word Gever, which means man in Hebrew. Gibor and Gever may have the same root, but not all heroes are men. Just think of all the powerful Israeli women we learned about yesterday for International Women's Day. Israelis really value courage, and it's a huge compliment to be called a Gibor. In the army, soldiers that are brave even receive a special medal for being a Gibor, called Salash, which is kind of like the Purple Heart in the American military. So if you see someone you think is brave, you can say, Eze Gibor, or what a hero. After all, we think these special people deserve a little recognition. Let's go ahead and take a look at the weather forecast. Thursday is expected to be partly cloudy with a high of 68 degrees. The weather will be a lot sunnier by Friday with a high of 70, so have your sunglasses ready. All right, everybody, that's it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.9 shekels to the American dollar. Remember to sign up for our daily newsletter at ILTV.TV. And don't forget to check out our evening update every night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for watching and see you tonight.